No man can see me and live. You, you can't even look at the sun. What can you see God, the creator of all these heavens and earth? So he says, no man can see me and live. Accept it. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. You'll die, you'll perish. But in Genesis chapter 32, verse 30, God inspires Moses, supposed to be, and tells him about Jacob. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Peniel, Peniel. For I, quoting, for I have seen God face to face. Jacob saw God face to face. But we were told that no man can see God and live. And God is not seen at any time. Now Jacob tells us that he saw God face to face and my life is preserved and I didn't die. Contradiction. Who's inspiring these words? I want to know. The pastor will explain. Yes. Amen. Yes, you will say. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. Accept it. How can God confuse people? It is the work of the devil. The devil confuses people, not God. Accept it. But in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 25, we read, Therefore, I also gave them up to statues, laws, that were not good. God gave them laws to people which were not good for them, which were not good. And judgments by which they could not live. That's a devilish thing to do. God does that. He said, I'm not the author of confusion. We believe he's not the author of confusion. But he's confusing, confusing his creation. Giving them evil laws, evil, evil statues. The work of God. And the same God is inspiring these two persons to write this. One says, look, God is not the author. And the other one says, he confused the people. I'm reading this from a Christian magazine called The Plain Truth. October 1977. It says, Reading Bible stories to children can also open up all sorts of opportunities to discuss the morality of sex. An unexpurgated Bible might get an X rating. I don't know in your Scandinavian countries you have such a thing as an X rating. Not fit for children to see. X rating. An, exp an, an unexpurgated Bible might get an X rating from some senses. A Christian magazine writes that. Which means, as George Bernard Shaw says, this is the most dangerous book on earth. <laughs> George, he says, keep it under lock and key. Your children must not have access to it. That's what George Bernard Shaw says. I want you to go and verify it for yourself, whether that statement of George Bernard Shaw is true or not. But I give you one little sample from the so-called book of God, because it can't be the book of God. I'm reading Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 1. Then Samson went to Gaza. You know Gaza where the trouble is taking place between the Jews and the Palestinians, Gaza and West Bank? Gaza, same Gaza. Same Gaza. Samson the Jew went to Gaza and saw a harlot, a prostitute, a whore. What do you call them here? Call girls. What do you call them? Huh? He says, no, in the English language they would use beautiful words, hookers and what and what not. Huh? So he went and saw a harlot, a whore, a prostitute there and went in and to her. He had sex with her. Hooray. Can you imagine, in the word of God, this guy here is he's a hero to so many people, Bible readers, Samson, you know Samson and Delilah? You heard the story, Samson and Delilah, you see the film? I think it's going on somewhere here now, in Stockholm, Samson and Delilah. That Samson, he goes to Gaza, this is, I'm reading the book of God, and he saw a prostitute and he went in unto her. He had sex with her. And what punishment? No punishment. He's glorified in the book of God. So I says, now what does it serve? Dr. Vernon Jones, a psychologist of great repute, an American psychologist, he carried out experiments on a group of school children to whom certain stories were being read. And he said that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character. 
even in the narrow classroom situation, you tell stories to children about anything, anything. You are programming the child, the stories you tell. Anything. So whatever you feed them with, sex, rape, murder, incest, you are programming the people. As soon as they get an opportunity, they're going to do the thing what they have been reading. We are what we eat and we are what we read. Whatever the type of literature you read, some of the things that you can buy here, if I take them with me to South Africa, I will go to jail for two years in my country. What I can get in London, Heathrow, what I can get in Kennedy Airport in America, what I can buy from here in Stockholm. If I take it to my country, my country, the white rulers, as far as morality is concerned, pornography is concerned, they are so strict that now in this age of mine, he says, you go to jail for two years for carrying such filth. But in the book of God, it is all halal, kosher, permissible. Describing God, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 20, he's describing God. He says here, in the same day the Lord will shave with a hired razor. Lord means God. He's going to shave people with a hired razor. You know the old-fashioned old cutthroat razors. I don't know whether you see them. Old-fashioned cutthroat razors. He's going to, God is going to shave with a hired razor. With those from beyond the river, with the king of Assyria. The head, shave the head, and the hair of the leg. You know, you have this today, this modern delipitry, what you call it. You know, the hair removers. Of course, the Lord didn't know about all that. He's going to shave the head, and he's going to shave the hair of the legs. I don't know how high. How high he's going to shave. <laughs> and we'll also remove the beard with the razor. Is this the work of God? God does things like that. You speak about God like that? That he's going to shave people's heads, and he's going to shave the legs, and... <laughs> Samuels, chapter 22, verse 9 to 11. Smoke, 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 no smoking here. Smoke went up from his nostrils. Whose nostrils? God's nostrils. Smoke came out of his nose. I'm reading the Bible, the Holy Bible. Smoke came up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth like a dragon. You know, whoosh, you know how the fire comes out? Like a flamethrower from God's mouth. This is talking about God. Smoke came out of his nose and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. You know, the, a lump of coals, all the pile of coals starts burning. And all the coals start burning. This is what God does. You know, like a dragon. And coals start burning. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under, under, under his feet. He rode upon a cherub. A cherub. You know what's a cherub? There's the script little girlish angels. There are two grades of angels. Look up any dictionary. Cherub, C-H-E-R-U-V, cherub. God Almighty is riding a cherub. A young girl angel. Listen to this, sir. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and flew. God is flying on a cherub. No helicopters. No, no plane. He's riding little girls. And these girls, if you haven't seen one, you must go to the Vatican in Rome. You'll see this beautiful thing, by God. I went there and uh, look, no regrets, no regrets. This is a picture taken, sir, from the Vatican in the holiest of holies of the Roman Catholic Church of Christendom. These things, if the cameras have caught, please don't reproduce this, please. Otherwise, this tape will be banned in every Arab country in the world. Look at this. This is the cherub, picture of the cherub taken in the Holy of Holies in the Vatican. In the Vatican, there are two beautiful young things in marble, flesh-colored marble, so smooth and silky that if you ever touch it, you'll get an electric shock. <laughs> and God rides these, he rides them and flies them around. Uh, I think that guy, the Superman, Superman does a better job, you know. <laughs> I would like 
to give pastor an opportunity now to explain all these anomalies in a book of God. Mankind's books, as a book people write novels, romance, and science fiction, it might be a fantastic book. But when you attribute these things to God, it becomes shameful and blasphemous. That is all what you are saying. That God does not write or speak these things and these words. I'm sure most people are going to be blinded by, um, if they watch this, blinded by the um, comparisons because no one wants to hear the book attacked, you know, beat the Quran, beat the Bible, beat whatever book that people use in their religion. They just don't want an outsider speaking on it. But what you can pick from this and what can help someone is uh, listen to what he, the statement he just made at the end talking about um saying god can do these things you know make these these mistakes that's what you should think about another thing to think about is uh what he said what you read what you listen to what you watch is what you become whatever you feed your body you become do you understand and that's the most important thing other than the there's two important things that I mentioned, the first one and this one. Very, very important. So if you're consuming such content, you're bound to indulge in such activities, you know, because with all these laws that we have, I don't think those things would sit well with today's laws because maybe today's laws are banning those things, you know. So I don't know, just be selective and choose to see the sense of course there is good in the bible pick the good in it focus on that even when you're talking to people that don't belong to um christianity preach the good things you know where there's contradiction if you're brave enough to say yes there's a contradiction but that doesn't pull away from the good message that's in the bible then go with that flow you know but just be careful we have to be careful with the information that we take in doesn't apply to me only doesn't apply to you only but to many people in the world i think all the people of the world let me know what you guys actually think otherwise i need that came through with the jokes when he was giving this thing that's why his uh, lectures are um very interesting and um let me know what you think give me something to react to just give me the name down below and i'll be sure to check it out make sure to give this video a thumbs up share to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.